Okay, this is a really important lesson, um, talking about mass spring systems again. Not so much because we're analysing the mass spring system, but because we're introducing a new technique, a way of analysing data that we haven't looked at before. If you think through what you've done in AS, a lot of the time we're trying to do y equals mx plus c kind of calculations. So we've got proportional relationships and we've got proportional relationships, um, sorry, linear relationships with a constant added to them. Right now we need to try to find a way of looking at relationships which are not quite so straightforward. So just a quick reminder first, a 4 Newton weight is attached to a spring that stretches 0.1 metres. We're now able to look at the spring constant. Okay, so we do F equals K delta L. We've got the force is 4, the extension is 0.1. So we've got 4 is K times 0.1 that gives us a spring constant of 40 newtons per metre. Now, if I think about it, if 4 newtons stretches it 0.1 metres, it'll take 40 newtons to stretch it a whole metre. That's what that number means. Okay, if you put another one in series, okay, then the extension, well, the first one stretches the same, the second one stretches the same again, so we've got a total extension of 0.2 metres. Okay, that gives us a spring constant from the system, where 4 is, of course, the spring constant of k times 0.2 extension. It'll only take 20 newtons to stretch it by a metre. So the general rule, as you might remember from AS of springs, if you add them in series, one underneath the other, okay, then you halve the spring constant when there's two, you divide it by three when there's three, you divide it by four when there's four, and so on. Okay, so here's the crucial bit. We're going to use some log rules to analyse data. Hopefully you've done some work on logs, okay, but you do need to learn a couple of um, techniques for doing this. And you need to know a couple of log rules so let's just remind ourselves of the log rules we need to know. The crucial ones are that the log of a to the power n is the same thing as n log a. And the second rule that's crucial for this is that whoops, is that the log of a b is equal to the log of a plus the log of b. Okay, you really need to understand those rules. If you're not doing um, core 3 maths, then you need to look into that. If you are doing core 3 maths, I'm sure that you'll do it at some point in the not too distant future, if you haven't done it already. So, if uh, we had a relationship like y equals x squared, what we do at the moment is we plot a graph of y... Uh, so, here's our graph, sorry, it's underneath my right in there, of y, equal, y against x, we get a curve. We want to get rid of We don't want a curve, do we? We want a nice straight line so we can find the gradient. So what we do at the moment is we plot y against x squared. If we plot y against x squared, then we end up with a straight line graph. We can find the gradient if there's a constant of proportionality between those two things. So if this is uh, y, sorry, if this is y equals k x squared, then we can find k because k will be the gradient of the graph. Okay, but what if we didn't know it was x squared? This is a crual question. Okay, what if we just know that it was uh, y equals x to some power n, and we didn't know what this n was. Well, we could try plotting y against x squared, y against x cubed, y against the square root of x, and so on. But surely there must be a better way. Well, yes, there is. Okay, and it comes from the fact that if y equals x to the power n, we can take the logs of both sides. So the log of y will be the log of x to the power n. Okay, but we know from our log rule up here that... Um, log of x to the n is the same thing as n log x. So what we need to do is to plot a graph where we've got our log y here, so this becomes just the y part of the graph, log x becomes the x part, and then the gradient becomes the value for n. So if you plot a graph of log y against log x, okay, then the gradient of this graph is the power that you have to raise x to in order um, to make this equation here work, okay? So the gradient would give us this value for n. Okay, so um, we do this experiment just to find this sort of stuff out. Okay, but then the crucial analysis is, okay, maybe that's not true. So maybe the equation is not y equals x to the power n, but y equals some constant times x to the power n. How are we going to find this value for the constant? Well, if we go back to our log rules again, sorry, we've got a c in here, but, okay, we can take logs of both sides, so we've got log of c x to the n. But this is like log of a, b. Okay, so if I make that a and that b, then log of c 
x to the n becomes the log of c plus the log of x to the n, which becomes the log of c plus n log x. Okay, think what we've just done. If I just turn that round, okay, I get to this equation. Well, again, this equals y equals mx plus c. So what I can do is I can plot a graph like I did before with log t on this axis and log x on this axis. And if it, for example, look, if it, for example, looked like that, or even a straight line, which I'm trying to draw if I can, that would be the gradient. So the gradient would give us our value for n. And then the intercept here, okay, the crucial bit here is that this is this intercept is log c. So the intercept equals log c. So what I want to do to find c is that c equals 10 to the power of the intercept. Okay, so what we're going to do, what we did in this experiment in this lesson is we tried out some data. Okay, and we got some values. So what you should have got for your system is t equals 4. This has just come from the constant k to the half. But that's because we know the equation for the mass spring system is 2 pi root m over k. Okay, so this has given us a graph with a gradient of minus a half and an intercept of log 4. Okay, obviously the values for this depends on the equation, but the value for this, okay, depends on the value of the um, mass that you've put on. So this is 2 pi root m times 1 over root k. Okay, so 2 pi over root m, that's where the 4 came from.